It was time for another rescue mission on Dreamlight Valley. After going through another door, I discovered a huge Chinese training ground. Within these training grounds, I discovered Mulan and Mushu the dragon. Mushu was utterly clueless about what he was meant to do, due to the forgetting. I decided to help him out in order to help regain his memory. I helped him clean up the training grounds. I dressed the part. I even prepared Mulan's breakfast. I even got to meet Mulan in person. Mulan was in much the same state as Mushu. Due to the forgetting, she was stuck doing the same things over and over again. I decided to help her regain her memory as well, by training alongside her that day, by running with weights, and fishing. Until, something quite unexpected happened. <coughs> A landslide occurred, covering half the valley in mud and debris. It was becoming clear that this land was getting far too dangerous for Mushu and Mulan. Thankfully, my training and interactions with them had restored their memories. After the landslide, they were more than happy to leave this place behind and return to Dreamlight Valley. With Mulan and Mushu back, they began adapting to life on Dreamlight Valley. With no more training routine, Mulan began struggling with what she could do. However, she did find ways to contribute things to the valley. She opened up a tea shop, and began hosting tea parties with the other villagers. We got to see shadow puppet shows. She even hosted contests for some of the more adventurous villagers on the island. Mushu, on the other hand, had other ideas. He wanted to fulfill his role as guardian to other members of the valley. He helped people like Beast understand his situation. In fact, one day, Scar was teasing a lot of the smaller villagers on the island. So, Mushu decided to make his own committee of small islanders. In an effort to stand up to Scar, and showing that they won't be pushed around, they even made me an honorary member. The biggest member with the biggest heart. A couple days later, Merlin had some news to share with me. He had found the way to find the spark of imagination. With our powers combined, we opened up the secret entrance to the spark of imagination. In order to obtain the spark, we had to delve deep into this temple. It was full of puzzles that none of us could solve on our own. Luckily Merlin was already two steps ahead of me. He summoned Gaston, Eve, and Rapunzel to the temple in order to help us out. With everyone's help, a doorway to the bottom of the temple opened up. When I arrived at the very bottom of the temple, I swear I could see small flashes of black and white. It wouldn't take me long to figure out what was causing all this. Unbelievably, there was a resident down here, forgotten, lost to the ages. It was Mickey Mouse's mysterious half-brother, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. 
Upon discovering Oswald, me and the rest of the group rushed him to the surface to get him up to date on what was going on. It was only fair that I built Oswald a house, but as it turns out, his house was a simple black and white drawing. Luckily, Oswald's strange reality warping powers did the trick and made it solid. In fact, Oswald's reality warping powers were getting a bit out of hand as soon as he came back. There were reports of alarm clocks running around like crazy, literal black holes you could fall into, and flying tram cars. Luckily for us, these problems didn't last too long. But soon, it was time to get back to the task at hand, finding the spark of imagination. With Oswald's reality warping powers under control, he was able to help us get through the temple, and eventually we found it. The spark of imagination. Soon, Merlin arrived on the scene, rather unexpectedly, and faster than the rest of the group. I immediately gave him the spark of imagination, as I didn't know how to control it. But to my horror, it wasn't Merlin at all. It was Jafar in disguise! He had fooled me. And now, he had the spark of imagination itself. Me and Oswald returned to the surface to find Jafar, only to discover that rifts were opening up across Eternity Isle. This had the result of bringing black and white objects from the past to our time, and it was affecting our reality in a dire way. I spoke with the real Merlin, and he said he would consult his notes to try and figure out how to solve this problem. With the spark of imagination in Jafar's hands? Oh god. Who knows what he's gonna do with it?